What's up squash players? Today I'm going to show you how to set up the racket wear sensor. I'm going to be testing this and this video is just a quick run through of how to get it attached to your racket. As you can see I've already figured it out. There were a couple missteps along the way so I'm going to show you the quick and easy and correct way to install it. I will be taking this apart and also walking you through the steps on the app. So first of all you need to search for squash sensor. There it is. While that's downloading, the box comes with this Caracal replacement grip, which I've already put on, but I'm gonna peel it off so you can see how it was done. Right, so the sensor itself attaches to this little clippy thing. Let's go in the app and show you. So when you first open the app, you're going to say get started and it tells you to remove the overgrip which I've already done. I just removed that that black caraco that came with the box. So I destroyed it in the process. I'm going to have to find a new one. Uh, but whatever grip, whatever grip you take off your racket, you can replace it with the grip that comes in the the racket wear box so you don't have to have an extra one handy racket wear provides one so I've taken that off now it's talking about putting the sensor on so this I'm using an old Salmon Canone Pro and I'm just gonna slide this baby over the top and just kind of rest it there for a sec all right now it wants you to put a piece of tape on now I destroyed the piece of tape that comes with it, so you don't need your own, but in removing it, I accidentally wrecked it. So I'm gonna get some electrical tape. Here are my squash source emergency kit. I really need to come up with a, a kit that I can flog on my channel because I really like this, but I got, it has nothing to do with squash. I got it from a, a trip I took. Okay, I got some regular electrical tape. I can't remember who suggested to always have electrical tape in your bag, but that was a really good advice. I always put my grips on with a nice thick bit of electrical tape. Okay, so here we are with the sensor and following the picture sort of exactly, I'm going to start here and just wrap my way around. Leaving it there. All right, that should be perfect. It's not gonna move. Now I just need some scissors, which I also have in the Squash Source Emergency Kit. Bought my own Squash Source scissors for just such an occasion. Okay, so we're gonna snip it off and call it done. All right, now it's on, we're gonna move to the next step. Okay, so now it's telling us to put the grip back on. So I'm gonna grab a replacement grip I'm going to use this Zamsa grip. Thanks to Zamsa for sending me this a really long time ago. I'm finally just getting to use it. This should go nicely with the colors of this racket actually. Kind of like how that's turning out. Okay. So we're just going right over top of, you know, gripping it normally over the plastic legs of the holder. Okay, now we're going to cut the end off nicely if I can remember the correct direction. That direction. Normally I just use overgrip, so I have oddly very little experience putting on a replacement grip. There we go. That's pretty much perfect. We'll get our electrical tape back out. Perfect. All right, now we got the grip back on. Now this is what one place where I got confused in my initial setup. The photo here says to connect to Bluetooth right now. That is the next step, uh, but 
you can't do it until you get through the end of the instruction. So I'll show you that in a sec. It's just also telling you to charge it at this moment. I already charged it, so I'm not gonna show you that, but there's a little USB charger device that comes, or mini or micro, whatever it's called. It plugs in the side of this and into a USB, regular USB 2.0 slot, I think. All uh, right, so ignore this one as well. Actually, that's the same picture. Okay, now we're going to slide the device on, and on the in the photo it shows a little click, and that's exactly what's going to happen. There's only one way to put it on, and it's with the the USB slot. It goes in slot first into the sled, so this is going to slide forward and whoops. There we go. It clicks in place, and there it is attached to the bottom of this and I believe I think it's telling me I got 10 hours of battery life and also that um, when it is blinking it you know that it's on the little this thing he's gonna blink I don't know why it's not blinking right now come on prove me right it was blinking earlier and I guess after five minutes of inactivity it's going to reset there's actually written instructions to go along with these pictures on the racketware.co.uk website so if you get confused you can check it out but this should be good enough okay this is telling you how to remove it there's a little tab on the end which is right here that you can't see really there it's right there and you press down on that and slide the baby out it's oh I did it on the first try this time it took me a few attempts previously to get that right. The best way to do it is probably to hold it straight up and down, press down really far, and then you sl wiggle it off, and then it comes right off if you need to, if you need to take it off. And I guess if you're playing a match or something and you don't want that on there, you can just, um, you can just leave the plastic thing on. It's very light and doesn't affect your racket at all. Uh, and this is light too, so um, I guess I should weigh this. 10.9 grams is how much just this base thing weighs. So you're adding 10 grams to the very end of your racket. We're gonna click it in there. Okay, and now at the last step here is you're gonna click continue. Okay, this is where the Bluetooth setup happens, not earlier, so you say, you have to say okay. I forgot to mention a step, but when it's starting to do connect to sensor, you're gonna get a Bluetooth pairing request pop up like this. And what you do is you look for the pin on the back of the device and you type that pin into this screen and press pair. And after that, it should connect to the sensor. It's going through the setup process. The first time I did this, it found that the firmware was not up to date. And so you just, I just waited, it took several minutes um, and it eventually downloaded the new firmware, rebooted, and it went back up to kind of the, the top check mark here and checked its way all the way through until, until it confirmed it was up to date. So we're gonna hit continue. All right, now for the profile. Okay, and we are set up. So this is where I'm gonna stop this video and I'm gonna take this out on court as soon as I can and show you what this app is like in the, uh, in the usage. But for now, you know how to set up your racket wear sensor. All right, thanks a lot.